Greetings learners, this is the Kenyan teacher one more time. It is our pleasure to continue with our series called Chemistry of Gases. In this video, we present a discussion on gases in the topic chlorine and its compounds. Welcome. The gases discussed in the topic are only two. We have chlorine gas and hydrogen chloride gas. We begin our discussion with lab preparation and uses of the first gas on the list and this is chlorine. For chlorine gas, as far as laboratory preparation procedures are concerned, the gas is usually prepared by oxidizing hydrochloric acid using suitable oxidizing agents. The oxidizing agents are usually three and they include the following. So the first oxidizing agent is manganese for oxide. And we are saying that if we are using manganese for oxide as an oxidizing agent, then we need to supply some heat. Reason being that manganese for oxide is a weaker oxidizing agent as compared to potassium manganate 7. So the setup would be as follows. We shall introduce our concentrated hydrochloric acid through our thistle funnel and inside our round bottomed flask we shall put our oxidizing agent, manganese for oxide. The reaction will go on to produce chlorine gas, which we shall bubble through water. We bubble chlorine through water at this point to remove hydrogen chloride gas, which will be vaporized from the acid by the heat at this point. So once we have removed hydrogen chloride gas at this point, we shall dry chlorine using concentrated sulfuric 6 acid here and then we collect dry sample via downward delivery method of gas collection. Chlorine is denser than air. When it comes to the equation for the reaction taking place in the flat bottomed flask, we have our oxidizing agent, manganese 4 oxide, reacting with our concentrated hydrochloric acid. The state remains aqueous. It is impossible to obtain 100% hydrochloric acid. So, as much as it is concentrated, the state is still aqueous. Now these would obtain manganese chloride aqueous. We shall get some water as well and our gas chlorine. This equation is balanced with a 2 on water and a 4 on our hydrochloric acid. Our next oxidizing agent is potassium manganate 7. So while using potassium manganate 7, we shall need no heating because this is now a stronger oxidizing agent as compared to manganese for oxide. So the generator would now look like what we have here. Concentrated Hydrochloric acid is still brought in through the thistle funnel and we have our solid potassium manganate 7 this time 
in a flat bottomed flask we shall generate chlorine and the rest of the setup in terms of drying of the gas and collection will be the same as in the previous setup when it comes to the equation for the reaction we have potassium manganate 7 solid reacting with our acid hydrochloric we shall use aqueous here as well this reaction produces manganese chloride aqueous we shall get some potassium chloride as well aqueous we obtain water and we obtain chlorine gas for purposes of balancing a 5 on chlorine 8 on water 2 on potassium chloride another 2 on manganese chloride 16 on hydrochloric acid and a 2 on potassium manganate 7 our last oxidizing agent is called lead 4 oxide for lead 4 oxide the reaction would be as follows lead 4 oxide reacting with our concentrated hydrochloric acid we obtain lead 2 chloride we obtain water and we obtain our chlorine gas of course we shall balance with a 2 on water and a 4 on our concentrated acid we are introducing another method here and we are saying that we can obtain chlorine from hydrogen chloride gas so chlorine may also be prepared by reacting sodium chloride with concentrated sulfuric 6 acid but in presence of manganese 4 oxide so when you react sodium chloride and concentrated sulfuric 6 acid we produce hydrogen chloride gas which is then oxidized by manganese 4 oxide to chlorine so that may also be used in preparing chlorine gas now when it comes to the equations for our proposed method we will have sodium chloride or what we normally call rock salt reacting with concentrated sulfuric 6 acid we shall get sodium hydrogen sulfate and hydrogen chloride gas now once we obtain hydrogen chloride gas we then oxidize it using manganese 4 oxide to now give manganese chloride water and chlorine so this is now a two-step kind of a reaction to give chlorine two on water four on hydrogen chloride gas we are ending our discussion on chlorine with uses of the same chlorine has so many uses the first one being treatment of drinking water this is very common at home or even industrially so we treat drinking water and even swimming pools with chlorine this is to kill germs because chlorine is poisonous chlorine is also used to manufacture hydrochloric acid we get pvc polyvinyl chloride polymer or polychloroethene from chlorine chlorine is also used to manufacture potassium chlorate we also get tetrachloromethane and chloroform from chlorine let's now move to the next gas which is hydrogen chloride gas hydrogen chloride gas is 
hydrochloric acid in solution. When it comes to lab preparation, we shall heat a mixture of rock salt, that is sodium chloride, with concentrated sulfuric acid. So the concentrated sulfuric 6 acid is introduced through the thistle funnel. Rock salt is placed inside the flask. Hydrogen chloride would be produced, which we shall dry by passing through concentrated sulfuric 6 acid. Thereafter, because the gas is denser than air, we shall collect dry sample of it through downward delivery method. When it comes to the equation for the reaction, sodium chloride is reacting with concentrated sulfuric 6 acid and we obtain sodium hydrogen sulfate together with hydrogen chloride gas. The equation balances out and we have to discuss two issues here. One, this method of preparation is based on the property of sulfuric 6 acid here being a less volatile acid. So if you introduce a salt of hydrochloric acid like sodium chloride, then this acid is going to displace HCl from its salt here in form of the gas. Second information is that we are not forming sodium sulfate but instead we are forming sodium hydrogen sulfate because of the temperatures at this point. The temperatures at this point may not be possible for formation of sodium sulfate. So these two pieces of information are also very important as we look at the method of preparing hydrogen chloride gas. Learners, we are finally looking at uses of hydrogen chloride gas as we end our short video. So, hydrogen chloride gas is mainly used in the manufacture of hydrochloric acid. With that, we have come to the end of this short video where we have had discussions about laboratory preparation and uses of our two gases discussed in the topic chlorine and its compounds. The two gases are chlorine and hydrogen chloride gas. Thank you for your time and keep it here for more videos on the series Chemistry of Gases.